boys and girls, we're going to, um, we're, this is another aspect of Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum, a program that's the first that we've done with them um, and learning about fossils and some rocks. And this is Nicole. So she works with Lannis and she also works with um, Rebecca at the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum. So I'm going to turn it over to her and we're gonna learn a little bit about fossils and then I'm going to do, and then I'm going to show you some cool fossils that I have in my collection, and um, and with my document camera. So uh, let's over to the expert. And Nicole, it's totally okay. We do not mind seeing cats in the background. I'm so sorry. Uh, cats like to be around where their owners are. So if your cat is there, I'm sure the kids are totally fine with that. Yeah, he just learned how to play fetch last night, so he's been obsessed with bringing me anything for me to throw, so it's hard to get him to go away right now, so I'm sorry. I hope you it's guys... It's all good. No, no, it's all good. We 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 appreciate you being here, so yes. Everybody see everyone's good with it. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Nicole, like they said. I'm from the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum. So I will show you a picture of what that looks like here. If I can get it up. Um, oh, it's not it. But I'm from the Ann Arbor Hands-On Museum. And um, this is a place in Michigan, in Ann Arbor. And so Michigan is a state in the US. Um, and just trying to share my screen here so I can show it with you. Let's I just see. need to give you access. Just give me a sec. Sorry, oh, it's my okay. fault. Okay, no, no problem. I just, I thought I was doing something. All right, well, cool. So yeah, my name is Nicole and today we're gonna be talking about some really fun stuff. We're gonna be talking about fossils. So let me show you here. That I'm going to show you. Oh, well, over here. Okay, there we go. I think fossils are pretty cool, like you guys, and they are something that I collect and that I've also studied in school so that I can tell well, you. We can only about. see your email, just so you know, you need to click on oh, your. Is it back up? Is this up now? Yeah, we. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yes, you got it. Okay, Thanks. sorry. There we go. All right, so this is what my museum looks like and we are closed down right now, but when we're open, we get to do a bunch of really fun science stuff there and we get to put our hands on everything and get really involved. And while it's closed right now, that doesn't mean we can't do that really fun science stuff. So today I've brought some of that cool stuff to you guys so we can do it online, just from my living room to your living room, right? So we're going to talk today about fossils. And to start off, we need to know a little bit about what a fossil is, right? Got to start off with that. So if we were to look at it in the dictionary, a definition of a fossil would be something like this. Remains, traces, or anything left behind from anything that once lived in a past geologic era, which is over 10,000 years ago. So let's break that down a little bit, make it make a little more sense. The first part, is that it's remains, traces, or anything left behind from anything that once lived. So things that are living are like animals and plants, and it just has to be something that they leave. So they might leave bones behind. These are called body fossils, when they leave something behind that came from their body, right? So they might leave bones behind. Maybe they'll leave footprints, like this mammoth did right here. This mammoth left footprints behind. And that's called a trace fossil. If it's not part of your body, but you left something behind, it's a trace. So it's a trace fossil. We could also have imprints of plants, like this imprint of a pine branch. We could also have skin impressions. So like if you were in some soft mud and you like pressed your hand into it or pressed your arm, it could leave a print of your skin we get that same thing in fossils. So these are just a few different kinds, but there are a lot of different kinds of fossils. The second part that's really important for this definition 
is that it has to be from a past geologic era or over 10,000 years ago. So that's super important. It can't be something that died yesterday or a week ago or even 100 years ago. It has to be older than 10,000 years. So this is a really cool graphic of kind of the history of the Earth here. The Earth is about 4.6 billion years old, so it's super old. And life started around 2.5 billion years is when we started getting some stuff, but not a whole lot. The most of it came um, about 540 million years ago at the beginning of the Cambrian. That's when we got like really big life starting. So this graphic is a little misleading though because it makes it look like it wasn't actually that long ago. So let's pretend, so this is this last part right here, the 10,000 years, okay? So it seems like a pretty big chunk of time, right? But let's pretend it's a clock. Let's pretend that we put the last 570 million years into an hour, all right? So 570 million years, because that's when complex life started. So life that was more than just one little cell, when it was like expanding and becoming something big, okay, like uh, plants and such. They were still underwater plants 570 million years ago, but they were starting to become plants. And if we were to put that on a clock for, 20, for an hour, humans this um like we see today would only show up at the last second so there's a lot of time between then and now and that's a lot of different kinds of animals and plants that are different from what there is today so when we find a fossil we find them and we learn about them and they tell us different things they might tell us something about the animal itself. So here is a picture of a tusk. And a tusk is these big, long teeth that come out of a mammoth or a mastodon. You see them in modern elephants too. You can see the big tusks. Those are actually just teeth that grow way far out, which is pretty crazy. And when you open up these tusks, they have these lines in them. You can see some of these lines in here. And they kind of have this like triangle or cone shape. And this is kind of like the tree rings on a tree. Like if you cut open a tree, it would have those different rings. And those rings tell you about how old the tree is. They might also tell you if a tree had a good year or a bad year. It can even tell you when summer and fall, spring and winter were. You can find all of that in a tusk for a mammoth or a mastodon. You can even find a lot more than that too. So you can find out about an animal. You can find out about a greater uh, time span over evolution. So for example, here we have the evolution of a wing. So wings, like we see them on birds today with tons of feathers and they're easily able to fly. That's not always how wings were built they had to start out from reptile arms. I and mean, if you, I don't know if you've seen a reptile, but they don't have a lot of feathers nowadays. So a lot of things had to happen in between finding, um, in between that reptile and that bird to get those full wings. And finding fossils is what showed us all the little spaces in between that got us to that wing. So it could teach us about evolution. Fossils can also tell us about the entire world. So on this map right here, you can see these stripes that go between these different continents. And you look and all the continents are squished together. That's on purpose because when we found those stripes, those stripes represent where we found the same fossils on different continents. Now, if those fossils were from something that's around today, those animals would have had to swim a really, really long way to get to the other continent. So a more likely explanation is that those continents millions of years ago were smushed together. 
and the animals could easily walk from one area to another. So fossils were part of the evidence that showed us that our Earth used to have continents smushed together. You may have heard of Pangaea before. Pangaea is one of these supercontinents that was all of our little continents put together. Pretty cool, right? So when we have fossils, all right, we get them from certain rocks, because right, we gotta find the fossils if we're going to be able to study them. So there are a few different rock types, all right? The, one of them is igneous, which means that it comes from a volcano. It might come from underneath the volcano in the magma, or it might come from the outside of the volcano when it explodes with lava. But either way, that's a really hard place to find a fossil in those igneous rocks. Because if you think about a volcano exploding, not a whole lot can survive that. So fossils don't really survive it either. There's also metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are when rocks get buried really, really deep under the ground. And with all that pressure from being buried, plus the really hot temperatures down there, they start to wiggle and jiggle like jello. And they start to take a different shape. And because of that, it's also kind of hard to find fossils there because they usually don't survive that process of bending and warping. So we are left with sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks happen when layers and layers of sediment or dirt or sand all come together and solidify. So if you've been to a beach before, you may have seen the sand wash up on shore in layers. It's the same sort of thing. And it's like all those layers just solidified. They compacted and became a solid rock instead of all those little bitty pieces. And that is the perfect environment to make a fossil so that we can find fossils millions of years later. Now, let's think about where you find fossils. So we find fossils nowadays, right? And you may have seen a fossil before. I'm sure a lot of you have. You might have seen a fossil in a museum. Museums are really popular places to show off fossils because they talk about the Earth's history and about science. You might have seen fossils in a movie, maybe like Jurassic Park. Or maybe Dinosaur Train is a TV show with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are fossils. So you may have seen fossils in a movie or a TV show. You might have also seen fossils outside, right? That's where we find rocks, and in rocks is where we find fossils. So that may be where you found a fossil. So fossils are all around us. But, oh goodness, he found the jingle ball. So fossils are all around us. Right? But how do they even get there? So to become a fossil, you have to start off with an animal that's died or a plant that's died or any other living thing that's died. Okay, and that is, sorry, but the animal does have to die, but it's okay because everything dies eventually. But what happens next is really cool. When you die, when animals and plants die, they start to do something called decompose or decay, where the soft parts of their body, like their skin and their muscles and their fatty tissues, they start to go away and start to break down. And the skeleton is the hardest thing to go away, especially the teeth. So you want to bury it quickly before all of that goes away. And that's super important. They've got to be buried quickly. Then after they're buried, you wait. You just have to wait a really long time. Remember how fossils have to be at least 10,000 years old, which means that you have to wait at least 10,000 years for it to become a fossil. The last part, if we want to study a fossil, is someone has to find it. So it's really rare 
for something to become a fossil. If you think about how there has been Earth for hundreds of millions of years with life on it, and we only just have this little sliver of time where there isn't fossils, that means most of history um, on Earth has animals in it, or most, um, most of the time that has animals in it can create a fossil. So that's a lot of time. So it's super rare that something becomes a fossil. It's even rarer to find a fossil, but we do find them a lot. It's just in the grand scope of things, it's pretty rare. So we have to find it, all right? Once paleontologists or the people who study fossils find fossils, they use it as evidence. So evidence is what you use to, they're like pieces of a puzzle. They're clues that you put together to solve a problem, okay? So we might find this fossil evidence right here. This is a, an ammonite shell. So an ammonite was an underwater creature. It was kind of like a mix between a squid and a snail. It had a hard shell that looked like a snail shell, but had tentacles like a squid. And it lived underwater in the sea. And if you look closely, you see these little circles, these little circles on the shell, they almost, they're all in a line and they almost kind of look like bite marks, like teeth marks. So paleontologists have their first piece of evidence, this ammonite shell with fossil teeth. Next, they found this guy. They found mosasaurus, which have these spiky teeth in them and they have a certain round shape to the teeth as well. So they had these two pieces of evidence. Now they had to put it together and they found that mosasaurs were eating the ammonites. So this was their hypothesis or their guess about what was going on. And then they found more ammonite shells that showed these bite marks in them. And they realized that they were right, that these mosasaurs were eating ammonites. So that's just one way that paleontologists will use fossil evidence. All right, can you guys see me now? I think you guys can. So, oh, I'm seeing cool, I'm seeing some people are talking in the chat here. You've seen them in rocks before. That's awesome. Or you find them on the beaches. Yeah. A beach is a great place to find rocks. This is cool stuff. So now I'm going to show you some of the real fossils that I have. So here is our first one. Let me put up background behind it so you can see it a little bit better. So these are our first fossils right here. And they may not look like much. They just kind of look like rocks, right? That's exactly the idea. They are rocks. Remember, fossils come from rocks, but these are special rocks. And you can really see what they look like when you dip them in water, because water brings out the pattern of this specific type of fossil. So these right here, you might be able to see them a little bit better now. These are called Petoskey stones. Petoskey stones are a rock that we find in Michigan. If you have a special rock you find in your area or a special fossil, I'd love to hear about it. You can say it in the chat. So these fossil rocks right here are pretty neat. <clears throat> they are um they have these six sided shapes on them. If you look really carefully, you can see those shapes on them that are six sides with kind of this dot in the middle, right? So that's a very special shape. Let me show you. So this right here. There we go. Oh! Here we go. All right, so those special rocks have that special shape, right? That's six-sided. Does anyone know what this shape is right here? Does anyone have a guess what this shape is? 
love to hear from you. So it has six sides. Oh yeah, I heard someone say it. Does anyone else have any guesses? What could be this six-sided shape? Yeah, I see some. What was pentagon that? or hexagon? Yeah, I see some people are saying, yeah, it's a hexagon. Exactly, it's a hexagon. A six-sided shape like this is a hexagon. And so when paleontologists named this fossil, they called it hexagon area because it has all those hexagons in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So hexagon area is a fossil coral. This is what it fossil I mean this is what a coral looks like today. So it's not exactly what corals looked like back in the past. This one's a this one's an extinct species so you wouldn't see it today. But this is kind of what it looked like. Corals live underwater in the sea in warm, shallow places. You see them often in um, shallow waters off the coast of places like Australia. The Great Barrier Reef has the biggest and most corals out there. And corals have these hard sides, and then they have these tentacles that come off, or at least a lot of them do. And those tentacles suck in all this water so that they can eat all the little mini tiny food in the water that we can't even see it's so small. So that's what a coral would look like. And this is its skeleton. So you may be thinking though, I found these in Michigan where I am right now. Now I don't know if you know the geography of this area. I know some people do, but if you don't know, Michigan it has lakes around it, but it doesn't have any sea or any ocean where we where corals live. It doesn't have anywhere nowadays where coral live. So how did I find this skeleton coral in a place where there's no coral nowadays? Hmm. Do you have any ideas? Oh, I saw someone said evolution. Yeah. Kind of. So this is a piece of evidence that we use to figure out that our state of this country was once covered with water. So on this map right here, you can see that a lot of North America used to be covered in water. And if you look really closely, you can kind of see this like little shape in here that is, <clears throat> excuse me, that it looks kind of like a mitten shape. That mitten is covered with water. And that's where I found this. Nowadays, it's land. So all of that water got sucked up into glaciers and we got a lot more land. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, and the corals were left behind and they fossilized. So that's one piece of evidence we got from it. We figured out that our state was once underwater. And if you look, parts of Canada were also underwater. That's really cool. Yeah, the earth has changed a lot since then. So that's one thing. Let me show you another cool fossil I have. Let me get this off sharing here so I can show it to you. Cool. So here is another cool one I have. I have three of them. I'm gonna give you a second to look at each of them. And I want you to look carefully at their shape and think what you think they might be, okay? So they have this round bottom and they get slender, more slender until they kind of point to a curved tip. So that's one of them. Here's another one right there. And I have a nice one right here. This one's pretty pointy. So what do you think those are? Oh, I'm getting some good guesses in here. Yeah, a lot of you said it. Yeah, it's their teeth. Absolutely, their teeth. And these are teeth of something called a mosasaur. Mosasaur, which is pretty cool. So a mosasaur, I want to share my screen with you again so you can see it. I'll show you the fossil teeth again in a minute too, but. I want to show you what a mosasaur looks like. So mosasaur looks like this. They're pretty neat. 
you may have seen a mosasaur before if you have watched jurassic world they're that creature that comes out of the water at the end that's really big that's a mosasaur <clears throat> excuse me and mosasaurs did get pretty big but they didn't get quite that big if you think of a, a semi truck if you've seen a semi truck out on like the highway or the roads and they have that really long trailer that trailer is how long these mosasaurs could get now mosasaur they lived in the time of the cretaceous and they were a marine reptile so they were reptile like dinosaurs and they lived in the cretaceous the same time as dinosaurs but they weren't dinosaurs they were actually more closely related to certain lizards called monitor lizards and snakes and you can kind of see that in their body they have more of a lizard like body than what we think of as looking like a classic dinosaur so that is what a mosasaur looks like and these are its teeth and we can learn a lot from these fossil teeth okay so you might be thinking um what could we learn from teeth like this they're just these small little things well one thing is learning about what an animal might eat right the first thing is we can learn about the animal itself so what do you think an animal with sharp pointy teeth like this was eating you have any guesses show it in the camera again so teeth like this what do you think they were eating pretty pointy teeth do we have any guesses it's okay if you don't i'm just curious if you do oh yeah some people are saying it yeah oh yeah okay so yeah they ate a lot of things and they definitely ate meat these sharp teeth right there are really good for chomping down on meat and shredding it another thing i heard in here is the um is the uh crunchy shells and remember we talked about that earlier with fossil evidence the ammonites that had the bite marks in it yeah those were mosasaurs that ate them so that's another thing that they ate they also ate these special birds that dove into the water like kind of like ducks or loons do um <clears throat> they were called hesperonis so they ate those um they ate fish because they were underwater so they just ate a whole bunch of stuff but that's not the only thing we can learn about from these teeth so i don't have a really good picture to show you about this one so i want you guys to imagine with me imagine that you had teeth way back in your throat use your tongue and feel as far back in you can as you can in your mouth feel all the way back there they mosasaurs had teeth all the way back there so why would you use teeth all the way back there you can't really bite down with them your chewing is up here i know it's scary isn't it it's pretty crazy well because fossil evidence isn't always complete we don't always get the full picture we have to think back uh, we sometimes have to compare it to modern animals so when we found those teeth in the way back like that we compared it to the modern animal of snakes some snakes have teeth way back in their throat like that too and snakes use it to kind of hold their meat, their prey in a little bit easier so that it doesn't wiggle away. And we think this is how mosasaurs use those teeth too. This would be especially important if they were eating the slippery fish in the water because they want to be able to hold the fish in their mouth and those back teeth while they spit out all the water, all that gross, yucky salt water. They don't want to eat that. So they're going to spit that out, but they're going to hold the fish back there in their teeth in the back. Pretty cool, right? So those are just some things that we can learn from their teeth itself. Yeah, noise. Yeah, I agree. But we can also learn about their environment. So much like the Potosi stone, I found this rock, I mean, these teeth in a, a place that is now land. It is in a place um, called, uh, I found these in a place called South Dakota, which is a state in the US that's out west, way out west. 
and it is completely landlocked, which means it is surrounded by land. It's not even near an ocean. So how did I find these teeth there? These teeth that belong to an animal that lived in an ocean. How did I find them in a place that only has land? That's weird. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Any guesses? Hey, if you don't, I'm just curious if you have any guesses before I say any answer. Yeah, they are really sharp, definitely. Oh, they got moved? That does sometimes happen, but they don't usually get moved very far. So that's the thing. There is ocean nowhere near this place. Oh, yeah, some people are saying it. Yeah, it used to be underwater. You guys got it. Awesome. So let me show you again. Mosasaurs, underwater, and the um, U.S. and Canada, all of North America used to have this giant uh, waterway through it that was all the shallow ocean called the Western Interior Seaway. And we've been able to find this out from the rocks and also from the fossils, the fossils of animals that lived underwater in places where there's no water anymore. So that's the kind of stuff we can learn from those fossils. Pretty cool. All right. So let's see. I want to check the time here. All right. I have some more stuff I can show you, but I want to open it up for questions to see if you guys have any questions that you have or anything uh, you want to show off. Any If you have a fossil you want me to talk about, or if you have a fossil you want to tell me about. I know one of our other hosts here had um, a fossil. Oh yeah, my kitty, yeah, he's trying to play fetch with me. He learned how to play fetch last night and he's obsessed with it now. So does anyone have any questions about fossils? The science behind it? If you don't, that's okay. I know that I, and oh yeah, you had fossil you want to show off, right? Um, yeah, I have some, if the students would like to see a couple, would you like yeah. to see them? And it's fossils and cool rock thingies that, um, that are old and they might've seen them a, a couple, uh, when we did rocks and minerals, but, um, I have, um, a few to show you. I just need to set things up. And if Katie can, if Katie can upgrade me please to a host. So I can share everything. I'm now the presenter. She's got some cool stuff. What was that first mollusk? Um, do you mean the ammonite? Were you talking about the ammonite? Um, the ammonite is a mollusk. It has a shell like a mollusk. Yep. They've look like a pokemon yeah yeah that's actually that's a, uh so that's that pokemon is actually based on that fossil i don't know if you knew that that's where that came from all right so we are ready to share awesome yeah i'd love to see what you have share my screen and i'm going to minimize everything else so nothing else pops up so can you see my computer, literally my computer screen now, guys? Uh, Mally, you just need to um, unpin Nicole because I can't because you're now the host. <laughs> okay. Remember when Pokemon Go was a thing? Yeah, yeah, I'm playing it right now as a way to get out of the house and do something out in the park. Okay, do you see my screen now? Oh, yeah, Good. there you are. Ooh, cool. Right. So, boys and girls, my dad, um, he was a hobby, they call them gemologists. And so he, on his spare time when he wasn't working, they went to a cottage in a place called Manitoulin Island, which is um, up, sort of up north. The ones, what, some people in uh, Fort Francis and, and Sioux Lookout might know where that is. It's the largest freshwater lay um island in the world and it has a lot of volcanic rock 
So the volcanic rock is called igneous rock, as we learned. So they had these um, really cool rocks that were called, this is volcanic rock, and it's, it's a geode, and on the in, outside, it's pretty ugly, right? Pretty ugly rock. And this one, kind of an ugly rock on the outside. But when you turn it over and you break them open, so my mom and my dad would go walking on the beach or walking in the forest, and they would look for these geodes because they knew that when they turned them over on the inside, they would have crystals. So look at those unbelievably beautiful crystals. So how these were formed was, um, they were formed in volcanic rock. There would be a hole and inside it, and it would get, the hole would get covered over with rock. But sometimes there were little holes in the rock. You can see the holes that are in the rock here. And it would allow water and it would allow some, some calcium to form inside. So over millions of years, it would form these beautiful crystals. Aren't they? And it looks kind of like salt, right? So that's one of the geodes that they found. Another geode that they found was, well, this one here. This was a really big geode. And what my dad did is he actually, they're worth quite a bit of money, actually. So it, he split it up, he took his saw and he split it up and he gave some to me and some to my daughters and, and some to my brother. Um, and it was formed the same way. It's, it's igneous rock that has, um, that has um, calcium and minerals that form inside way over time and with heat and pressure. And here's one more that's a different so they come in different colors too. So yeah, this different those are beautiful. Yeah, these well, they're pretty special. So here's the this is this almost looks like a sedimentary rock. I'm not sure. I well, I know it's it has to be a sedimentary rock because I can see the layers, right? But on the inside well, of this one, it would have these would have been different minerals and different uh different minerals because they're different colors. So the, the, these are, and these are actually pretty special to me because, um, yeah, because my dad gave them to me and he's not here anymore. Um, so then he also found on his walk, he found this. Oh boy. <gasps> I think this could be guys. Oh. Yes. <gasps> Oh, that's right. And just before we did this session, I was talking to Lee and I said, Lee, is this a coprolite? And she said, well, can you see anything else in it? And um, so I turned it over and, and the way that we know that it might be poop is it would be something else inside that the animal might have eaten. So it kind of looks like it. We're not sure. But we think it's coprolite and what we would have to do is take it to a museum or a science center and they would slice it open and they the paleontologist there would do something different but i'm going to leave it like this because i just think it's really cool and then there are rocks under the ocean as well right we've learned that there's rocks and animals under the ocean so this is a fossilized piece of coral Ooh. Um, again, it would be really, really old and all of these would be tiny, tiny animals. Let me zoom in. They almost look like little beehives. And all of those would be the leftover casings from the animal. And then we have this piece of coral, which is, see if you can tell me what kind of coral this is. Look at that. Ooh, that is beautiful. Oh, oh yes, yeah, some people were saying it. Rain coral, that's right. Gabrielle, I don't know what the problem is going on, but 
I know that you'll be able to fix it. Okay, there we go. So with the brain coral, and again, that's made of millions and millions and millions of different animals. You can get it to focus. And you know what, guys? My parents, oh, look at that, that little hole there. Did the brain coral, I can't read the question. Did the brain coral come from what? Manitoulin. Um, maybe. My parents also traveled a lot, so they could have, and because they knew, I, well, obviously they knew I was a teacher. Um, because I was a teacher, they used to bring me cool stuff from all over the world. So I, I, I'm not sure, but it could have. Um, but definitely the coprolite and the geodes came from Manitoulin Island. For sh I know that for sure because we used to um, also look. So what that lesson really sort of told me was that if you guys explore, if you guys want to keep exploring around where you are, you might find some fossils or even a geode or a piece of coral. As um, Nicole said, this whole part of Canada used to be covered in water. So you never know what you're going to find. Thanks for letting me share that, Nicole. Thank you for sharing. That was really cool. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of cool stuff left over from teaching. Um, Rayelle would like to know what other animals that lived in the water is now extinct. Lot of them. That is a great question to also look up online and in um, in the libraries. I can talk a little bit about it, but there is way more information out there than I can talk to you about in a minute. So they had fossil uh, fish down there, like this one right here. And just because it's a looks like a fish we might see today, it doesn't mean that it's not extinct. So even it looks the same, and this is actually an extinct fish. There are extinct birds that could dive underwater. There were um, whales and there were uh, trilobites. Trilobites are really neat. Uh, trilobites, if you've ever seen a horseshoe crab, they're kind of similar to a horseshoe crab. They're kind of like a mix between a horseshoe crab and a roly poly. And they lived underwater. Um, there, let's see, there were a lot of corals. There were brachiopods, which are really neat. Let me see. I actually have an example I can show you. Brachiopod. Brachiopods had these little shells. And this would be like the hinge of the shell where the two halves came together. Right? And they're kind of like clams, but their symmetry or the part where they mirror each other is different. So the part where you can divide them in half and they're the same on either side is different in a clam than it is a brachiopod. But yeah, there are a lot of different animals that used to live underwater. That's actually where we find most of our fossils, um, or not where we find them, but the kinds of fossils that we usually find. Yeah, that's a brachiopod right there. It's a beautiful one. Um, and that's those are the fossils we usually find because getting buried underwater is a perfect environment for them. Let's see, what's another question? Uh, what is the biggest fossil that you've seen? The biggest fossil I've seen has probably been um, a mammoth skull. So mammoths are fossil elephants that um, they lived actually pretty recently. Humans used to hunt them. And there were even some that weren't fossils that lived beyond, that actually lived to the time the pyramids were built. Yeah, that's a mammoth skull. That's perfect. So you can see they had those really big tusks. And that spot in the center that looks like it's kind of like an eye, it's not actually an eye. That's where its nose came out and its trunk. It's so big because it had a big trunk there. Its eyes would have been more on the side. And what's interesting about these fossils is that we actually think that's where the myth of the Cyclops came from. 
because when people found the big skulls of elephants and mammoths and all of their other fossil relatives, they saw that big hole and thought it was a giant eye. So it must have been a big cyclops. That's why some pictures of cyclops have them with tusks. And yeah, someone said the Ice Age. Yeah, exactly. They lived um, mostly in the Ice Age. And that's when, yeah, that's a mammoth right there. And um, during the Ice Age, um, or when that ended, that's when this modern part begins. So anytime the Ice Age or earlier is when fossils came from. Do I have any saber tooth fossils? I don't, sadly. Um, but they are really cool. If I did, I'd show you. I did take a picture with a saber tooth once. When we moved the museum, we were doing some cool, um, or a museum that I work, another museum that I work at. When we moved the stuff over, we had to move our saber tooth fossil and we wanted to take pictures of it first. So I actually got to hold the saber tooth fossil while some other person dusted it off. So they are pretty cool, pretty cool animals. All right, do we have any more questions? I'd love to share any more information you have. Oh yeah, that's a saber tooth. They had some nasty teeth, look at that. Yeah, they were pretty cool. They could open their jaws really far. Yeah. So I always have more stuff that I can talk about, but I'd love to hear any questions that you have. You know, that's okay too. Or if you wanna tell me about any cool fossils that are in your area as well, because I know like everyone has fossils that are unique to their area, like the Petoskey stones are to my area. Any questions? We have a lot of arrowheads in my area. Yeah, that's really cool. We do too. Yeah, so arrowheads are an example of something that an archaeologist would look at. So there's actually a difference between archaeology and paleontology. And a lot of people don't know this, but it's really cool. Archaeology is going to look at the human history based on artifacts. So they're going to find arrowheads and pottery. Excuse me. They might find a, a grave site. That's archaeology. Paleontology is the study of fossils. It's looking 10,000 years or earlier at animals or plants that lived a very long time ago. So not necessarily the artifacts, but fossils. And they do overlap a little bit. For example, you could have, um, we have found before fossils of mammoths that show evidence that they were hunted by humans. And so there are tools and such there. So that's where archaeology and paleontology can mix. I think is pretty fun. All right, you guys have great questions. Do you have any more you want to ask or anything you want to um, tell us about? Any cool fossils in your area? You guys, um, depending on where you are, I don't know where you are. I know you're in Canada, but I don't know where. Um, they, in Canada, they have the, uh, they have a, a logger stat, which is a type of place that preserves fossils really, really well. So you get some really cool fossils in Canada. There's also really good dinosaurs there. And also that's where a bunch of mammoths and mastodons came through. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw some stuff, especially on the West Coast side of mammoths and mastodons. I'd be interested to learn more about it. Yeah, and well, um, oh, sorry, Rael was wondering how do plants go extinct? Sorry, Mally. No, that's what I was going to ask. Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't see that one. How do plants go extinct? Was that what it was? Oh, yeah, how do plants go extinct? So the same way that any other animal can go extinct, or sorry, any other organism, not they're not, not animals, obviously, they're plants, but um, just if the environment can no longer suit it, if it can't live there anymore. So sometimes it'll get too hot or maybe they need um, a certain type of thing to live. And if that's not there anymore, they'll go extinct. Or if they get outcompeted, like if something else, if another plant does a better job at using the resources or all the food from that area, it can push the other ones out of the way. 
some plants are even like toxic and poisonous like they know there are some trees that send up little poison from their roots so that kills all the other plants around it so plants can compete against each other so that they can live pretty crazy but they're definitely extinct plants yeah, and just to answer your question where some of the students are from, uh, usually they put it in the chat, but Rael is from Iqaluit, and that is up on Baffin Island in Nunavut. So if you just picture Canada and the some of the white areas, and we have, um, oh, maybe Gibblers from Mississauga, which is near Toronto. Okay. And Gabrielle, you guys can maybe type in the chat where you're from. So um, Gabrielle is from Markham, that's right. And St. Catharines between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Okay, I know where that is. Yeah, I'm in one of the Great Lakes states, so I'm around there too. Yep. And we have lots of students who come from Northwestern Ontario. Aiden is from North Vancouver, British Columbia, so it's early for him. You guys are from all over. Yeah, they are. They're from all over Canada. Winnipeg and Sioux Lookout. So Sioux Lookout is north, um, uh, northwestern Ontario. Poplar Hill is in northern Ontario. Um, Gravenhurst. So we don't have any students who are from Alberta, where most of the Badlands are. Alec and Elise are from Iqaluit as well. That's up north, and they would have had um, not as uh, they would have had a I think a mastodon. Um, um, up there, I think. Oh, woolly mammoth. Sorry, woolly mammoth would have been up there. Cool. So, the, yeah, there's always, um, as we said, always room to explore, and yeah. we'd love to talk to you again. Maybe we could learn something else about geology, and which would be great. This was really fun, and the That's students awesome. share what they found. They know exactly how to share it with us. We've had lots of emails coming in in the past couple of days which has been really special oh that's awesome and yeah you're absolutely right definitely explore around you that's how i found this brachiopod fossil and how i found a lot of my fossils were just from looking around my area i found them by the river by the lake i even find them in rocks that people put in their yards to decorate i find them everywhere so yeah just explore and so that's great. So I hope they'll do that because it is getting nicer outside. So yeah. it's just coming up at um, at noon, we have Josh doing his blue whale drawing with us, which is going to be exciting. And then this is really cool because it fits in. We're going to be learning about volcanoes of Guatemala, and Ooh. we'll so we'll learn about volcanic rock and magma. I like just saying that word magma. And then at the end of the day, drumming with and dancing with Wakaman. So we'll, thank you, Nicole. That was just wonderful. We loved it. And good to see everybody here. You are so welcome. Thank you. I had a blast showing this off and seeing your fossils. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thanks, Nicole. Bye. Thanks, boys and girls. <laughs> Bye. Bye.